Guess what time it is? It's Spritz O'Clock. Good afternoon, girlies, and welcome back to the Spritz O'Clock podcast, where each week my bestie and I sip an Aperol Spritz while we talk about all things girl talk, navigating your 20s, and our best advice. My name's Amanda. And I'm Reeves. This week, our topic is wardrobe do's and don'ts. We're giving you a dress code for every occasion, and I'm really pumped about this episode because we have not done a fashion episode in a minute, which you guys know is my favorite topic. This is Amanda's bread and butter. I feel like you are our fashion girly, like... I have to ask Amanda for fashion advice. Props to you. Thank you. It really is my bread and butter. I mean, as I sit here in a Tarte Cosmetics sweatshirt and Aviator Nation sweatpants. No, here we are. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, guys, listen to me about fashion. Um, Anyways, but yeah, it really is my bread and butter. It's my favorite thing to talk about. So I am, of course, very excited for this episode. I've taken many notes. And I feel like this is just going to come in handy because there are so many occasions in life, like, The one that comes to mind for me is bridal showers and baby showers that I never know what to wear, especially in the winter months. Mm -hmm. It's really my pet peeve. I just went to one of these, actually, and that's why I'm bringing it up. But when it's 40 degrees, 50 degrees outside, you don't want to wear, like, a sundress to a bridal shower or a baby shower, but you feel like that's what you should wear to that occasion. I just always associate those with spring. Me too. But really, they are all times of year because Mm -hmm. people get married all times of year and have babies. Yeah. All year round. I don't know why it just but I kind of like not gonna be I don't want my bridal shower or my baby shower to be in like January no because then people are going to be worried about what to wear and that's where this episode will come in handy and therefore we'll send them this episode yeah (laughs) like next time someone asks you what to wear just drop the link to this episode (laughs) yeah also we're going to talk about like what to wear to a job interview a first date what to wear when your friend texts you just put on something cute you know, all the things that are kind of stressful, a travel day, things like that. But before we get into the episode, let's give our ins and outs of the week. Reeves, what's your first in? My in this week is my Amazon foot massager. And I will link it in the show notes for you guys because this thing, it has me in a chokehold. My sister gave it to me for Christmas because I have talked about it on this podcast. I have the world's worst feet. Like, I have old people feet. And I can't wear any cute shoes and i sit on my couch i literally have it plugged in under my side table by my couch and i will use it every single night and every single morning it's really so nice like i'm debating buying one but we bought so much stuff because i just got a puppy for those of you guys that maybe don't follow me on social media we have a nine week old multi poo puppy in our house now and she's quite literally costing me an arm and a leg because we had to take her to the emergency room the first night that she stayed in our house but um that's a story for a different episode anyways i am very envious that you own this foot massager because right now it's not in my budget yeah you have you have a baby to clothe like you have a lot of things you have to buy for her yeah and massaging my feet is not a priority it's taking the back burner do you have an out I do have an out for us. Okay, my out this week, and I don't even know if this is going to be relevant to any of y'all because I doubt anyone who listens to this podcast has had this cosmetic procedure, but (laughs) BBLs (laughs) are so out. (laughs) They're so obvious. Okay, here's my thing. Like, who thought that looked good? The Kardashians. I know, but like, <laughs> imagine seeing a normal ass human being walking around with Kim Kardashian's butt. I just think about it, and it's like, where do you buy clothes? No, I, I don't know. Like, when think about it, you guys. When you have a size twenty four waist <laughs> and size <laughs> fat ass, fat, fat ass, <laughs> where do you buy clothes that like fit your waist but also fit your butt? Like every single piece of clothing she owns, you know. How- it has, has to be to tailored. To, has to has to be tailored. Like it has to be tailored. I just think about it, like who is flying to Miami to get this procedure, and then you have to like sit on your knees on the plane on the way home because you can't sit on it. Wait, you can't sit on it. No, Amanda. Literally, my girl that does my laser at Sev told me about her BBL, and I was so confused by it. And I was like, wait, what? She got her boobs done at the same time. I'm like, honey. How did you sleep? You can't sleep on your butt. You can't sleep on your boobs. She's straight up on her side all the time. Wait, did it look natural? She was in scrubs, so I couldn't really tell. I was like, I feel like scrubs it over. I can't tell. I don't know, but I just like always think about that. Like, if you saw someone with that ratio 
in like IRL, like if you guys have seen the Kardashians in real life, like please DM me you and just, let me know. It's what obvious. does that look like? Like in real life, it has to look like supernatural. Like it has to look like almost. And I'm a diehard Kardashians lover, watcher. I've watched the show for years. I love Kimberly. Like, literally my idol. I just cannot understand. Like, I honestly, like, fully back them and all their other cosmetic procedures. Like, yeah. I'm a very big, like, do do whatever is going to mm-hmm. make you feel best. And if that's a BBL, then also more power to you. I just can't see the vision. Like, I, I think, really can't. Like, what does it feel like also? Because, you know, fake boobs feel really weird. Sorry. Maybe that- I should, like... <laughs> ask the sub girl if i can feel her butt next time like you know when you feel like a breast in it, like do yeah. you have any friends that have their boobs done and like you, mm-hmm. f- you feel their boob not that it's i'm like not feeling, feeling like ours like it, it feels very different yeah it does and not that that it's a bad thing i mean like everyone i know who has their boobs done like they look incredible like i would die to it look just, like alex earl in the trust area but like <laughs> I'm saying, like, the feel is so interesting. Like, nobody talks about that, really. Yeah, I feel like it must just be, like, way firmer. It's way firmer. It feels like a, like a... Or does it feel like jelly? Like, I don't know. No, it it feels like, like, you can tell there's an implant. Yeah, like, it's not, like... (laughs) What is it? Like, it's not squishy. Is there, like, a... What if um, I put in it? I know what it is. Like a pillow? Like, what? No, it's... Isn't it hyaluronic acid? I thought it was. Hey, Siri... What is a breast implant made out of? Okay, here's what Google says. Even though some breast implants are filled with saline, that's what it is. Saline. All breast implants have silicone outer shell. Yeah, I know that. This outer shell might be textured or smooth. It may be round or teardrop shaped. There are many different options, but all of them will contain some amount of silicone. Yeah, so it's like, it feels like almost like a water balloon, but like with a hard shell to me. And I don't have them in me, but this is just for me, like, feeling my friend boobs after they've gotten them done. Tea. I don't know. I I would love to know what the butt would feel like. That's what I'm saying. I don't know anyone who has a BBL personally, so I can't, I can't attest to what it feels like. Yeah, I'm just kind of, like, team natural booties. I don't know why. (laughs) Like, I just think, okay, here's my thing. Like, maybe it looks good if you have, like, a thicker waist. Yeah. I could totally see, like, having a thicker waist and a flat butt and then getting a BBL. Mm -hmm. But if you are straight up a size zero, like, you do not need, like, the world's fattest ass. Like, I'm sorry. You just, like, it's It's, going to look weird. Yeah. It's just not proportionate to your body. It's not. It's not. And and I I rest my case. That was a good one. (laughs) Anyways, what's your out? Well, I'm going to get my out. And I've decided that my out this week is the pickleball epidemic i am so tired of walking into any store seeing all this pickleball stuff and it's not even cute anymore i thought that the collabs like the pickleball paddle collabs were cute for a while it is so overdone i'm tired of it i am tired of it i have played pickleball like twice it's fun whatever but i'm just tired of people overhyping it to be this huge thing it's gotta stop why do i feel like pickleball is kind of the biggest testament to why virality is kind of a curse Mm -hmm. like pickleball was viral like everyone was obsessed with it and don't get me wrong it could just be the fact that it's winter now yeah but i feel like it's kind of out i agree like nobody's really talking about it how they used to and i feel like if we're just now getting into pickleball it's almost like kind of icky because no it's it's kind of like it's kind of like, oh, you just heard about pickleball? Like, you're just getting into that? We're about to get blasted. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. I was trying pickleball, like, way back in, like, quarantine. What? Okay, no, I'm totally making They're that like, up. What? No. Okay, I, like, the first time I played pickleball was, like, maybe over a little over a year ago. Or maybe... It was, like, 2022, actually, I really feel like. Well, I'm just going to be honest. The first time I played pickleball was, like, right after I got my wisdom teeth out. So, what, October? Like, I'm fake. But, (laughs) like, I'm sorry, but I'm tired of all this pickleball stuff. No, I think it's totally fleeting. It is. Like, tennis is forever. Tennis is forever. Pickleball is fleeting. Tennis is, like, chic. Like, Paige Lorenz. (laughs) Wag, girlfriend, chic. But pickleball... Like, who's really out here? Like, who's the pickleball queen? I don't know. If you're a pickle... If you play pickleball, are you a pickleballer? I think so. See, that in itself (laughs) would turn me off from the sport. (laughs) I could not be going around saying, like, 
Oh, yeah. So, I do play sports. I'm a pickleballer. Hey, my name is Amanda. I'm a pickleballer. Like, what are your hobbies? Oh, I'm a pickleballer. <laughs> Don't say that. <laughs> Like, you just sound like a nerd, nerd alert. No, nerd alert. Nerd alert. <laughs> I agree, it's out. But yeah. I'll probably go play in a few weeks, so, like, nobody... No, she'll me. be, like, on the court soon. You know, it, there's only room for hypocrites in this podcast. We are mm. hypocritical. Yeah, that's why it's ins and outs of the week. We say that all the time. Yeah. yeah. Strong opinions, loosely held. Yeah. And just on a positive note, what's your in? Okay, I have an in for us. And because we're talking about fashion today, I thought I would give us a fashion in. Wait. What? I thought you were going to say your in was your dog. <laughs> oh, no. No. That that would be too predictable. <laughs> I Okay. I, carry I, on. Okay, I'll do two because I don't want to be rude. Okay. But, you, like, have to, like, do okay. an honorary one. Honorary in to my new puppy, Mary Muffin, DeWitt Palco. Reeves just gave her her first name, Mary, and her middle name is Muffin, but she goes by Muffin. We always knew she was going to be named Muffin. Like, me and Max were just like, okay, our dog's Muffin. Like, this is years ago. Like, when we were, like, plotting getting a dog. Plotting. We always knew it would be Muffin. And, you know, fun fact, all of my dogs and children, I want to be named after foods. I always say this. She's not kidding. Yeah. No, I'm, like, dead serious. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mary Muffin, DeWitt Palco, and Reeves gave her the name Mary Mm -hmm. today. I did. My niece. Yeah, she's so cute. She was named by her auntie. She's literally perfect. She's a muffin. Like, it couldn't be a more perfect name. No, when I saw her, I was like, yes, this is muffin. Yeah. Absolutely. She looks like a muffin. No, she is. Anyways, Mary Muffin's downstairs because she could not handle being in the room with this amount of cords that it takes (laughs) to record this podcast. I mean, we would be buying all new equipment if she had been in here. (laughs) Yeah. It wouldn't be good for her either. (laughs) No, she'd probably be, like, electrocuted by these microphone cords. (laughs) Anyways, my real in this week is... Okay, hear me out. Slim pants for 2024. I love that. Like, not skinny jeans, but, like, skinnier than what we've been seeing recently. Like, I don't want to see any more, like, boyfriend, saggy, saggy Sue, cargo. I mean, like... Your butt cracks hanging out like you're the plumber every time you bend over because your pants are so loose. <laughs> I, I'm over it. I'm like, I think 10 years from now, we're going to look back on this era of time and be like, what were we doing? Mm-hmm. Like, our pants are, we're barely keeping them up. Like, they're huge. They're like balloons. Like, the barrel jeans now that I'm seeing, like the barrel leg jeans. Yeah. I mean, I'm not even going to lie. Like, sometimes I see people wear that. I'm like, oh, that looks good. And I'm like, yeah. But then I'm like. They're just not as flattering as, like, a slim pant. I agree. I, mean, I think, like, if you're a, a twig, you could wear the barrel leg pant. And, like, honestly, it looks good styled sometimes. But, like, I'm not going to go out and spend a significant amount of money on, no. like, a pair of any more baggy pants, quite honestly. No. Because they're just not timeless. I think we need a good little boot cut, a good little, like, skinny jean even, a good little, like, you know, slim with a flare, if yeah. you want it to flare, uh, I a love straight a straight leg, a good little, like, what is that called? Like, a little kick flare, even? Like, you know, those mother jeans that everyone wears? I forget crop what flare. the... The crop flare one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Not kick flare, crop flare. There we go. And I think capris will actually come back in for spring and summer. Oh, yeah. Major hot take, but I think, like, a cropped, like, yeah, a little crop flare mm-hmm. jean. They're so cute. It's so cute. It's so tasteful. It's so timeless. I, I like think of like a little cute mom with a cute top and her golden goose on when I think of those little crop flares. Yeah, I know. I think of that too. It actually really reminds me of Max's mom because that's like her absolute uniform. uniform. <laughs> it's like a popped collar, like button down. And cute. if it's a little bit cold out, she always puts a sweater over it. That's really cute. No, she's, I mean, she dresses so well, but um, that's what that reminds me of. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, I think like we, we've got to just, you know, Take take a step back and think about what we're doing with our pants these days because they're it's getting out of control. It's out of control. It mm-hmm. is out of hand. The pants are too big. Mm-hmm. Period. Shall we get into the episode? Okay, which occasion do we want to give a dress code for first? Maybe I start it off with the first date. Okay, I like this. Me too. Do you want to give a tip first or should I? Okay, I'll go. <laughs> Fine. So, I feel like on a first date, you want to wear something you're super confident in, and this is not the time where you need to test new outfits. Like, I feel like you need to have a good uniform for a first date. 
So I feel like a super flattering jean. So I always go for my bootcut jeans. They're from Good American. They're actually the most comfortable jeans that I own. So I will link them below. I love them. And so I'll wear those with a cute black top. And I have this one top I love from Reformation. And it like goes off the shoulder, kind of rolls over, and then it's kind of ruched on the side. I don't know, but it's long sleeve. It's super flattering, super cute. And like a cute little kitten heel or like a cute boot now that it's winter. And do your hair like normal. Do your makeup like normal. Like it's not the time to try anything new, I feel like. Wouldn't you agree? I 100% agree. I think especially on the beauty front, Mm -hmm. as you mentioned, like this is not the time to break out the new foundation you got at Sephora a few days ago or try smoky eye for the first time. You want to look really natural. Like, so fun fact, 99.999% of the male species does not like a lot of makeup on girls. Mm -hmm. I feel like even if you think you need a lot of makeup, I promise they would prefer prefer you with like no makeup less is always more girls i feel like girls think that too like my friends i've like put on a bunch of makeup before like who has it they're always like i I think we need to dial it back a little like i feel like the my thing is this like i think it's okay to have on a lot of makeup if it doesn't look like you have on a lot of makeup yeah if it's piled on guys always comment on that the thing is, like, you can have heavy makeup on, but it can't appear like it's obviously heavy. Mm-hmm. You know, it needs to be no makeup makeup. Does that make sense? Like, <laughs> wear makeup to look like... You're enhancing your natural beauty and your natural features. Yeah, but for me, that's still very much like a full face. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's a difference between wearing a lot of makeup and pulling it off and wearing a lot of makeup and looking cakey. Yeah. So just Definitely. know which one you are. And if you don't know like facetime your mom and like your sister Mm -hmm. and like a friend that's brutally honest and they will really like pop you back into reality okay well then what's your like outfit suggestion for a first date it's funny that you brought up reformation because i think i learned this from tinks actually you know i love her (laughs) yeah i love her (laughs) forever ago she always said like reformation is like the best for a date it is the most sexy flattering clothes but it's not like too much no and it's it they're all neutrals i feel like they have some colors but yeah but they're really classic pieces and i also Mm -hmm. super agree with you in the fact that if you have one really good first date outfit that's all you need because yeah if all you're ever wearing this outfit for is first dates it's fine none of these guys like are gonna they're not gonna know well yeah they're not gonna know because you can only have a first date with someone once like yeah so Mm -hmm. have your first date uniform something you feel really good in when it's hot outside, I mean, I haven't been on a first date in a long time, but just dates in general, I would say, especially, like, with a guy you just started talking to, I love, like, a good dress. Yeah. This sounds really weird, but you want to wear something that's very flattering for you and, like, very, I hate the word sexy, but, like, sexy, but not, like, too much. I don't want it to look like you're trying to look sexy. Yeah, we don't need to have our boobs out. We want them to, like imagine what's underneath yeah it's sh- you should leave it up to their imagination i think if it's hot outside a good like maxi dress mm-hmm. or a good cute yeah midi dress or a good even like mini sundress that's not too short like a sundress is so like chef's kiss if you guys this first date is something where you're gonna have to walk a lot do not show up in heels i no. think that will look like really no offense like high maintenance mm-hmm. and weird but I do think if you're going out to dinner, you should wear heels if you can, because you're going to want to know if you can wear heels around this guy. Yeah. If you're a taller girl, especially, like, wear the heeled booties, wear the kitten heels, wear the platforms, like, whatever. Mm-hmm. Test it if the guy is going to be shorter than you, and then you'll know, like, if that's something that bothers you, you'll know if you're taller than him or not in heels. That's, like, a deal breaker for me. So, honestly, that's really good advice. <laughs> like, I think wear heels if you can. If you're going to be walking a lot, you're going to look like a freaking lunatic yeah, but just like wear some cute little loafers or sneakers or yeah something. i think like a ballet flat's really cute but y'all okay. know i'm partial to that um i really need a pair of ballet flats i love them but you're you're gonna hate them reeves because you have bad feet yeah so <laughs> I'll be, you'll have to throw me over your shoulder <laughs> <laughs> if we go he'll have to pick you up and carry Wait. you oh my god should i wear ballet flats i'll just like carry you home mm-hmm. really kind of cute no i think that could come off annoying yeah he'd hate on the first date he'd be like high maintenance bitch okay Um, what's next okay next we have let's go for meeting the parents what would you wear meeting the parents okay 
modest is hottest mm-hmm. when meeting the parents because you don't want to stress out your significant other yeah. by your outfit. Mm-hmm. Like, I cannot tell you how many times, like, I'm so sorry because I am very, like, pro wear whatever you want to wear. If you want, you know, free the nipple, all of that stuff. <laughs> not with the parents. Not with the parents. <laughs> like, just put your boobs in your shirt this uh, one time. Put on the one-piece swimsuit. Don't like, wear a crop top. Yeah, like, like just, just this one time. Like, give that poor boy you're dating some peace of damn mind. <laughs> That you're not going to be like... Just be the good girl. Be the cute, yeah, innocent good girl. Shorts are not going to be up your hiney, like, walking in there. Like, just cu- this one time. You know what I mean? <laughs> Put your boobs up, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> so, modest is hottest when meeting the parents. That's my yeah. number one tip of advice. And I would also say, this is not the time to wear the barrel leg dream- jeans that we no. just talked about. Let's it, wear something classic. It's classic. We don't want to raise any questions. This is your first impression. And remember, first impressions stick. Yeah. That will never be forgotten by them. Like, your first impression is so important because it is what they remember you by, not the six, seven, eight, nine, ten times you visit them or they visit you after Mm -hmm. this. It is what they first see you in, which I hate to be, like, applying the pressure like that. But genuinely, it really doesn't matter what you wear as long as it's not something super revealing and not something... Just like way out way out there that's yeah. gonna just like put you in that box of like oh, i hope he's not marrying this girl yeah. you know i feel like during the winter a cute turtleneck and like some jeans or like a really cute sweater and jeans and like little boots or whatever i feel like that's good for the winter summer i would go with a cute dress like meeting them dresses are so easy too because you not put it on short. Yeah. Not too sure. Once again, this is probably, like, the m- amazing time to, like, wear a midi or a maxi dress. Yes. And I would also, like, you know, ask your boyfriend, and I know that they probably never know because guys never know, but depending on, like, where you're going to be meeting these parents, like, what's the dress code? Like, are you meeting them at, like, a wedding or something? Are you mm-hmm. meeting them... At a steakhouse? At a steakhouse. Or, like, like, the kitchen. Or are you, yeah, literally going over to their house for the first time? Because if that's the case, I mean, this is another thing I want to say. Do not show up in sweatpants. Yeah. Like a sweat set. Like that you might think it's cute that's from Daily Drills or something like that because his mom probably doesn't know what that is or maybe she's really in the know and does. But I'm saying like, look, get yourself dressed. I will say like you need to not Mm -hmm. be like a slob kebab. You need to like probably have like some good jeans on, not ripped jeans. Don't show up empty handed. Also, like while we're on the topic, yeah, bring mom a nest candle or like something when you're meeting them and they're having you over or something. I I also, yeah, I would say this. This is so freaking random. If you are wearing open-toed shoes, please, for the love of God, have your toenails painted. (laughs) I, it freaks me out. Every single occasion we talk about here, your toenails should be painted. Period. (laughs) Just like a blanket statement. Unpainted toenails, illegal. I hate unpainted toenails. (laughs) I have to get mine done. Out. 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 I have to get mine done once a month, like winter or summer. Like honestly, summer I <laughs> might go twice in a month because I'm so anal about it. We all don't have bad feet, so you can paint your toenails nude if you yeah. don't want like anything. I mean, like not clear, but like have a little color on them, like baby pink. Like you could literally do like bubble bath by OPI for yeah. all I care. But they've got to have something mm-hmm. on them. And same with your nails. This also goes for, like, any of these occasions because a lot of them are first impression involved. Like, first date, meeting the parents for the first time, an interview, all of that stuff. Your nails are so important. Make sure they're clean. There's no dirt. There's no grime living underneath them. And if you want to go the extra mile, I would just, like, skip the super long nails or, like, the tips or, like, the coffin shape or anything, Mm -hmm. like, really trendy once again. Like, once again... I'm all for express yourself, you know, whatever. There's just a few occasions in life where you've got you to reel it in. Mm-hmm. Just one day, one time, even if it hurts a little bit, because you don't want to, like, end up marrying this guy down the road and think, holy cow, like, why did I think it was a good idea to, like, show my tramp stamp the first time I <laughs> met his mayor? <laughs> okay. Our next occasion, let's do graduations. Okay. 
So I guess let's do what to wear to a graduation. You are not the graduate. This is if like your sister's graduating, your brother. You know what's a weird one? It's like when your boyfriend's sister is graduating or something, you're like randomly invited or mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah. So hard to know what to wear. I would go for a dress. I would this. say do not wear a white dress ever yeah. to a graduation because a lot of times, especially if it's a high school graduation, mm-hmm. like I know in my high school, all the graduates wore white dresses. That's what we wore, yeah. Yeah, so I would say skip white. It's like one of those things like a wedding. Weirdly, I don't know why white is like the color of mm-hmm. graduation, yeah. but I would just like skip white for a graduation. Yeah. Do like a pretty pastel or do like a little pink dress or something, but just, yeah, don't do white. And I usually would do like a... I think of like an Alexis dress, like short or like something like. Funny you say that. I wore an Alexis dress to my sister's graduation. Alexis makes the perfect like middle of the road between like sundress and cocktail dress. It's almost like a garden party vibe. Yes. Don't you think? Such a good way to put it. Yeah. Like if you had the budget, like a good like little Carolina Herrera moment would be like perfect. Yeah. Yeah. If you're (laughs) just wanting to drop a few grand on a graduation dress. I feel like. Ackler has cute ones. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you're perfect for this. Like stuff that Shop of the Mix would have, like, yes. A lot of this stuff. Mm-hmm. But Sink a set. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Lula Johnson. Just like cute. I don't know. Even like Love Shack Fancy would probably have some good mm-hmm. stuff for that. Yeah. Um, Allison Olivia. Yeah, definitely. Any of those. And, and a lot of this you can get on Rent the Runway too, you guys, because I know for occasions. It's really annoying to have to buy dresses because they mm-hmm. can get super expensive and then you yeah. wear them one time and take a bunch of pictures and never want to wear them again. It feels like everyone's seen you in it. So you can rent these, you know, always keep that in mind. Mm-hmm. Like I always say, like, look at Fashion Pass or Rent the Runway or Newly or one of those if you're not looking to That's such a good tip. Drop a big bag on a dress for like, yeah, your, <laughs> your boyfriend's, boyfriend's sister's, sister's graduation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> that's a good idea. I, I definitely think wear a dress and I definitely think like maybe a little heel or like a wedge mm-hmm. or like a little platform. Yeah. Be cute. I love a wedge. And maybe bring like a little sweater or cardigan because it's always really cold mm-hmm. in those like gymnasiums and auditoriums where people graduate. Yeah. Um, and nothing too revealing. Once again, it's a family function. We're not having the boobs out at the boyfriend sister's graduation. <laughs> Thank you. Put them up. <laughs> okay. Let's do the baby showers and slash like bridal showers during the winter yeah i feel like during the summer or the spring this is very similar to the graduation wardrobe that we just talked about so any of those dresses could be applied here Mm -hmm. even better you'll have a reason to rewear your brother's i mean your boyfriend's sister's graduation dress Uh uh-huh the dress you wore to her graduation you can also wear to your cousin's wife's baby shower i always think of like a pretty floral print for these like something very sweet So, for baby showers, I think a fun thing to do is to, if they've announced the gender of the baby, dress according to that. Mm -hmm. So, my cousin is having a baby boy. I just went to her baby shower. And I wore a blue tweed jacket with a matching blue and black tweed skirt. And then I did tights underneath the skirt, black tights because it's winter, and knee-high heeled black leather boots. Cute. And what did I... Oh, cream turtleneck underneath the blue. and It was like blue, black, and white tweed jacket. That's so funny that you say that because Amanda and I were talking about this before we hit record. But we were talking about like what to wear for during the winter. And I immediately thought of like my little J. Crew tweed dress. So that's funny. Yeah. I like, feel like I think tweed is so tasteful. Tweed is really tasteful, classic. And it's almost like... The winter version of the pastel garden party dress, if Mm -hmm. you will. It's really easy to find matching sets in tweed, which make your life a lot easier in the winter. So if you do a tweed skirt with the tweed jacket, you can throw the turtleneck sweater underneath and tights on the bottom and knee-high boots. And you're like set and it looks winterized but still really festive for the baby and like bright and happy. Zara's had a bunch of tweed stuff like coco chanel inspired mango tweed. also always has a ton of tweed mm-hmm. i feel like uh yeah, you can definitely find it at affordable places i yeah. would say reformation once again has tweed stuff too if you want to go up Cute. like a little price bracket it's still mm-hmm. not like horrible probably like 200 yeah j crew j mm-hmm. crew is a good place for all of that and then i would a lady also jacket. say like a sweater dress is a good option mm-hmm. here too and you can get like a really cool maxi one yeah or i think if you're the one giving birth a sweater dress that's like a little bit tighter is a fun way to show, show off your bump. bump if you're in dallas saint bernard 
at Lovers in Inwood always has really good stuff for these functions. Yeah, one, they do. One brand I love is Rode, R-H-O-D-E. I feel like they have really good, like, winter dresses. They'll always do stuff in, like, velvet mm -hmm. that feels, like, a little bit wintery, but it's still, like, a really feminine kind of, like, festive look, if you will. I feel like they have their lively dresses, things. Yeah, and their dresses are super flattering, and I think they... Like, the main one I always think about is the one that has the belt, and you kind of, like, tie yeah, it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then it kind of... Yeah. It's they're, they're They're good for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. so, too. Yeah, good. so that's good. I also think a good little pantsuit. Ooh, I hate that I just said pantsuit. But, like, I don't know what else to call it. Not, a like, a jumpsuit. No, I'm saying, like, pants, oh. like a trouser. Yeah. And, like, like, a blazer. blazer. But you... I have a good... Yeah, I love that. Sinkasap one. Mm -hmm. They have the best blazers and little trouser situations yeah so it's like a slim fit like i'm mm -hmm. not saying like a dad trouser with like a dad sneaker that you would see like street style on instagram yeah i'm saying like something cute and i would pair it with like a heel mm -hmm. like a pump yes oh, this is one thing i want to say about winter functions in general put your toes away <laughs> toes like if you're wearing a heel i don't really like it when i see toes in january or like toes in december at all really i, I don't either weird but i just no, don't, I don't like it I don't like, I like a pointed like boot or heel. I, I think that fine. looks like great. A, a pump is fine mm -hmm. with a tight. And like, I think a lot of people do open toed shoes with tight successfully, but it's quite hard. It's yeah. quite hard. And just put your toes away. It's easier to just do no toes. Okay. Our next topic, weddings. What uh, would you wear to a good wedding? So this is as like a wedding guest. Yeah um okay first rule with this is look at the invitation and see if there's a dress code it is our pet peeve when people do not specify what the dress code is for a wedding and i know you think you're being nice probably as the bride but believe me when i say it's actually a lot nicer to tell people mm -hmm. what to wear instead of leaving them wondering because it can be very stressful especially when you are not like related to the person getting married yeah. or really close friends if you're the plus you couldn't, like, one ask. you couldn't ask if you're the plus one your date is your only source for mm -hmm. like knowing what the dress code is and a lot of times guys don't know yeah like you guys know when i was a plus one to a wedding with max in santa fe he told me i was going to scottsdale <laughs> it was it was 90 degrees in scottsdale and 60 degrees in santa fe <laughs> so just let me know and i, I didn't remember. know until the day before that we were like I mean, like, I packed all the wrong stuff. You still looked great on that trip. Thank you. I appreciate it. I had to borrow his mom's wrap every single night because whatever. Oh. And it was a black tie wedding. And I had, like, this tiny little, like, thin slip dress on. And I was it's like, like, oh, my God. And people were, like, pulling out the furs for a night. And I was like, shit. Oh, like, <laughs> I thought it was going to be 90. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, if you're the bride, like, please just be, like, black tie or please be like cocktail mm -hmm. or whatever black tie optional which is also kind of a pet peeve of mine because i'm like just pick one just pick one it's either yeah. cocktail or it's black tie period i feel like a good tip for that like some people don't specify on the actual invitation but some will if you go to like the mm -hmm. not is yeah that what it's, it's called? Like, like they have a website that's their website too. you could put it on the website but i had a sorority sister of mine literally make like a lookbook on her website like I she made amazing. the vibe she was like wear this not this and i was like i love it for her that is fabulous i agree i good could, for her i would totally do that mm -hmm. I you probably would i want to see my guests like you know doing the most like yeah. wear that dress that you have had literally no excuse to ever wear in your entire life like rotting in the back of your closet yeah because Pull it's it like out. so insane yeah mm -hmm. i agree anyways back to the point Number one thing is find out if there's a dress code. Number two is follow it. So yeah. black tie, little refresher for girls means like a full length dress. Mm -hmm. I don't think it needs to be like a full on gown. Like that to me is more like Deb vibes or like mm -hmm. a white tie even, which is like nobody really does that. Wait, what is white tie? Like where guys wear tails oh. on their jackets and like a white tie. Mm -hmm. It's like super formal. Yeah, that is. I've never even been to anything that's white tie. I mean, I'm sure there's like some people that have 
those weddings. I don't know. Anyways, it, we haven't been invited to them. I mean, I'll go shoot a ball gown. <laughs> Dang it. Hey, wear, I wouldn't want to have to, have to wear one of those. <laughs> no, but that would be fine. I just feel like if you're the bride, always specify like mm-hmm. key length or a and long dress. Obviously, never wear white to a wedding. Yeah. If y'all don't know that, just don't do that. Or even your off-white champagne. Like anything ivory, in the realm of if white. If it could be mistaken for white. Don't. If it is a white dress with a green sash, don't. Just any other color. Just pick a different color. It's not hard. Like literally wear black. Some people say don't wear black to a wedding, and I don't agree with that. Um, I love I love wearing black. There was another color. Like you're not supposed to wear red to a wedding because it means you slept with the groom or something like that. Oh, I have you heard that on TikTok? Yeah. Yeah. I don't believe in that. I think no. that's silly, silly. Mm-hmm. White's really the only thing. Yeah, don't wear white. I was going to say, like, don't wear flat shoes. <laughs> Are oh. you talking to me right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you? <laughs> no, okay. Well, one thing also that's kind of confusing is, like, a beach wedding. So, a beach wedding, you kind of can wear flat shoes if it's on the effing beach, though. Like, if it is in the hotel in the ballroom and it's like being called a beach wedding because the hotel's on, on the beach you're putting on a heel yeah yeah like if you are in the sand okay fine just take it's your shoes off at that point yeah but like I would go barefoot i would just say barefoot like you know wear some pearls and like, yeah do some mermaid waves but like <laughs> <laughs> do your mermaid waves but no bring out the waiver i think a beach wedding you need to have a heel on if it is yeah. in the hotel like proper mm-hmm. on the hardwood floor yeah so amanda what would you wear if your friend calls you it's a saturday and she's like amanda let's go day drinking let's go shopping let's do whatever and you're like okay what am i gonna wear just wear something i'm, I'm dressing cute <laughs> so you're like shit what do i put on I'm not going to lie. This is like the most stressful category to me because I'm like, cute Cute. could mean like stilettos and cute could mean like aloe leggings and a Sherpa vest Mm -hmm. and like your cute sunnies and some sneakers. Yeah. Like it literally, the pendulum swings both ways. It's really hard. It's the hardest category and it's the most common, I fear, because I deal with this every single week. So I would say figure out, this is a really annoying answer, so I'm going to elaborate on it. But first of all, like, figure out what cute means to you. Mm -hmm. Because, like, there's certain people that, like, don't really dress up, like, period. Yeah. Like, there's certain friends I expect when we say that's the dress code to, like, still show up in leggings. Mm -hmm. Because they're just, like, that friend. So just, like, know your crowd. Well, kind of know the crowd. Also, I don't think there's any shame in, like, asking what the other person is wearing. But if you see that they're dressing to the nines, you cannot shame them for doing so. No. That is one thing that bothers me. Like, if they want to sparkle, let them sparkle. We just love to get dressed up. So, like... Yeah. I I think cute to me for a day drinking vibe usually means... I mean, in this weather, a good pair of denim. Like, my Mm go-to jeans. It's January, by the way. Yeah, it's January when we're recording this um for me either a cute sweater or a cute jacket or like so i usually do like a tight sweater these days like i'll do like a tight like crew neck sweater or like a tight turtleneck sweater Mm -hmm. and then a cute jacket over that and then my shoe will usually be like some sort of flat like i'll do like a ballet flat most nine times out of ten these days i'll wear a ballet flat that would be like my uniform wait actually let me just like go to my ltk and look at all my outfit pics and i'll tell you like what the yeah. what i would wear for that because i feel like i can answer way better than this and i feel like in the spring or summer oh sorry probably like spring <laughs> i would wear like a cute little dress or like a casual dress um with sneakers or like jean shorts and a little top honestly like i'm not even a fan of jean shorts so or like a cute little set or something i really like a denim mini skirt mm-hmm. so cute that's my hot take I want to ask you, though, Reeves, like, what is your formula for, like, a night out in the winter? Like, what is your, like, for, like what do you always revert to? Oh, so I always love to do, like, a black or, like, a denim jean. I love to do a tall boot and, like, a turtleneck or jacket over it. Or I love to do leather shorts with tights and tall boots with the top. I think that's really cute. I like to do that too. That's like mine is like definitely like a leather short 
Mm -hmm. tights tall boots like a turtleneck tight turtleneck and like a cute jacket tight turtleneck is it's always we love a good tight Mm -hmm. turtleneck me and you i'm obsessed with the turtleneck honestly sometimes i get hives when i drink or when i get nervous so we love turtlenecks i would wear like in the summer and spring i would wear like i love a denim skirt like a mini denim i love denim no she loves it. I always am in denim. Oh my gosh, you my are. white denim shorts. I always wear white denim shorts in the spring and the summer. Cute. With like a cute little Reformation top. Oh, I cannot wait for warmer weather. That's what... Me either. Reformation has the best tops for casual daytime weekend activities. And one thing about their tops, they are like boob friendly. No, yeah. Reformation can take all of our money. Is this like a Reformation ad this entire episode? <laughs> no, literally I, I don't think they're sh- I, I don't know if we're chic enough for them to sponsor us but um <laughs> we love them we give them a lot of money we love you reformation next occasion let's do a job interview okay the worst person to ask i only had like three inter- my were all on zoom i okay so i actually just did an interview not for a job but i just signed with a talent agency what have i not told you that i'm sorry you're fake no oh We'll be talking about this later. <laughs> Anyways, sorry, I really thought I had told you that. No. Okay. I knew you had a meeting with them. Oh, okay. I met with like three, but I signed with one. Obviously, I can't sign with all three, but Wait, I, I just that. had like three interviews on Zoom, is what I'm saying. And so, just to fill you guys in, in like influencer world, a lot of influencers have like managers or agents. And when you go through the process of getting one of those, you usually talk to. I mean, I don't know how many agencies other people talk to. Probably, like, 10. I have no idea. Um, But a lot of times when you start talking to an agency, they will, like, have an introductory call, which is really, like, an interview format. And, like, I mean, I don't know how other people show up to the call. I was, like, okay, I'm going to treat this as an interview because you usually have to share, like, your, you know, like, income with Mm -hmm. them from, like, the previous year and, like, what campaigns you've done. Like, they'll ask you questions, like share your analytics like you know all this it was like a very like business it was an interview yeah it was like an interview yeah so i mean it was on zoom um (laughs) well because it's january and it was last week i did wear a black turtleneck (laughs) she's so predictable these days okay but this is the sign if you don't have like a good black turtleneck honestly at this point like i have like a white black brown like i have every color turtleneck i have every single color turtleneck because I love them. In the winter, it's so easy because in the summer, you'd have to wear, like, a blouse of some kind that's, like, mm-hmm. professional looking. Like, winter, you can throw on a turtleneck and a blazer. And They're you're, like, stunning. And you're, like, business profesh on Zoom. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so that is kind of what I wore. I didn't wear a blazer. I wore a black turtleneck sweater. And then, oh, I thought I had the jacket in here with me. This black and white tweed, I guess. It's kind of tweed-esque. Cute. Reformation. <laughs> Reformation. <laughs> Wait, it's the one I was wearing today. Oh, no, you only saw me in my black um, tight top. Yeah. yeah. I was wearing the same jacket that I wore to the interview over it. Cute. And then on the bottom, I wore jeans because they couldn't really see my bottom. But if I had been going in person, I would have worn probably my trusty white sink up trousers mm-hmm. and a little black pump. Cute. Probably what I would have worn yeah. for an it for those interviews. I feel like black and white is always good. Black and white neutral, so chic and good. Brown, gray. Yeah, and I don't think yeah. you really have to wear a heel for an interview. I think it mm. looks good. But I used to work in a corporate office many moons ago, and we would have people come in and interview all the time. I actually got to sit in on like two interviews, like as not the interview candidate. Like I was like observing, observing the interview. And I remember people wearing flats and, like, thinking it was fine. Yeah. But also, this was in marketing, which is, like, a lot more casual than, like, banking or yeah, something like I that. Think it just, yeah, it just depends on your job. Truly. It's like, about, like, if you're in social media. Yeah. I mean, I would not wear jeans. If I'm being completely honest, I would never show no. denim to an interview. I would never wear anything that showed any sort of cleavage. I would never wear anything tight. too tight or too short. Or short, yeah. Um, y'all know about my rule that and this doesn't even apply for interviews because i would do none of them for an interview but between short tight and low cut you pick one so like if you're wearing a dress and it's super low cut it can't also be short and tight Mm -hmm. like it has to you know like you pick one and that's like for like a first date or for the saturday day drinking thing or whatever 
yeah not for an interview you do none of them for an interview. <laughs> <laughs> but i think like during the winter yeah a, or just a button mm-hmm. down like a button down is always like yeah good look i always think a little button down a blazer a good blazer mm-hmm. oh y'all know i love a blazer and like a good pair of little trousers who makes your favorite blazer um well, my casket blazer that is on the cover of this podcast that you are watching is Escada. But <laughs> she's getting buried in the pink Escada blazer. So there's that. I have this one that I really like right now from J. Crew. I feel like they make good ones too. J. Crew makes a good like interview fit in they general. Do. Yeah. Olympia Marie. We'll link her down below, the women's designer for J. Crew. Mm-hmm. If you look at her office looks, Pretty much any of those. I mean, they're a little artsy fartsy, some of them, which I love. Wear that once you get hired. But you could totally take good, like, corporate inspo from her. Any mm-hmm. of the corporate job girlies, which I feel like brings us to our next topic, which is what to wear in the office. In the office. Okay. So I don't work in an office. So I'm just going to, like, preface this. But if I did, I feel like I would have a really good go-to pair of cute but comfortable like slacks if you will and i feel like Spanx has really done a really good job of perfecting their work pant keep in mind i have not even tried them on but i've seen them on people and they look amazing they like truly snatch you but they're Spanx, so they're so comfortable so i feel like those would be good pants and they're kind of like flare and super flattering and it's winter so like a sweater or like a jacket over it um summer i would do a cute button-up blouse situation so what would you wear i I guess shoes ballet flats i feel like would be perfect for an office ballet flats is perfect okay so i used to work in an office my uniform when i worked in an office i mean i was still posting on tiktok if you really want to scroll uh in the summer i wore a ton of dresses like maxi and midi length dresses literally saved me my rent the runway membership saved me Mm -hmm. if you are just getting out of college and working your first corporate job it is like literally culture shock with how many clothes you need to buy Mm -hmm. transitioning from being a college senior sorority girl to like a full-time office employee i remember feeling like oh my god i was used to wearing like lululemon leggings every day And, like, going to, like, having to need, like, dress pants and, like, blouses and blazers and loafers and pumps and, like, all these things. I was like, holy hell. Like, I'm spending my entire salary, like, just being able to get dressed. Yeah. And so, I remember I asked for my, like, work wardrobe as a part of my graduation gift. So, I know not everybody, like obviously probably gets that was a very nice graduation gift that my parents gave me but if you are needing one that's like a good thing to keep in mind like have them your mom like take you shopping one day to the mall um banana republic has amazing clothes for this yeah and they totally have like redone themselves they're super chic now Mm -hmm. j crew Zara. zara mango oh, jinx we said zara at the same time H&M. I, I got so much stuff at zara when mm-hmm. I, and i mean like but the, at the end of the day it's like work stuff you don't want to spend that much money on i See, feel like i disagree because i think you get dressed if you truly work in an office five days a week those yeah. are the clothes you're wearing more than anything else i guess you're right you're like right. day in day out but i will say just to get started like you can't go blow up neiman marcus and get like head to toe <laughs> alc and like helmet lang like i mean like i wish that would be like my dream corporate wardrobe like veronica beer like are you Mm -hmm. kidding me like she's the most amazing like office like little blazers i feel like but i do think zara is an amazing place to start because they have that look same with like mango for a lot less um my old roommate works in private wealth and she always had the cutest corporate outfits and i mean like her office she shop was like very formal i feel like like she could not wear denim like ever in the Mm -hmm. office or something like that um she did run the runway a lot she did zara a lot she i feel like she wears like alc blazers a lot like those that's my favorite sorry going back that's my favorite blazer it's so good if you want to like invest in a blazer i feel like Neen bing also has really really good blazers um she wears loafers all the time like literally all that she never wears heels that's one thing that's like yeah. very interesting like i feel like you don't really in today's day and age you really don't have to have 
a lot of heels unless you just like wearing heels but Mm -hmm. she's like i hate heels yeah and she gets a lot of pants at zara like i feel like a lot of her work pants are zara like they actually have really good options they're a little thin yeah in my opinion like that's one thing i would change but like just to get you started yeah good turtlenecks and she wears like button downs like a lot honestly Mm -hmm. okay and our final occasion is travel outfits and specifically when you're jumping off the plane and have to run to dinner or something like that so you can't just wear athleisure yeah this is excluding like sweatpants you Mm -hmm. guys like obviously if you want to be super comfortable on the airplane disregard this but this is for the occasion where like you need to make the most of your wardrobe for the plane ride because you can't change or like whatever the situation is or you're flying with people maybe you're like you're traveling for work or something like that Mm -hmm. traveling with your boyfriend's family you don't want to look like a total slob i'm just gonna go ahead and rip off the band-aid okay i think you just kind of have to like give up the idea that you're going to be super comfortable Mm -hmm. and just wear something cute it's really my like ultimate thing but i will say i would never wear shoes that you can't wear socks with because that gives me like the biggest ick going through security and taking off my shoes and having bare feet on the airport ground i freak out i have this thing where i can't have my toes exposed or my legs exposed on a plane like it could be nine billion degrees out and i'm wearing leggings on the plane i'm wearing my tennis shoes or like freezing on the plane yeah i hate it i'm just like a germaphobe in that way i don't know so i feel like if i was in that situation i would do i always love my trousers i'm like they're very comfortable I would either do trousers or I have the Daily Drills silky wide leg pants. They literally feel like pajamas. Love those. Like a sweater or something. There's so many options besides denim in this day and age. Like, I would really argue that, like, denim is, like, one of the most uncomfortable things you could wear on a plane. Yeah, definitely. I would never want to wear denim on a plane. No, I never wear a dress on a plane either. That is, like, really just random, just me thing. No, so I wore a maxi dress on the plane. I was... I was in the situation. I was flying to Charleston to meet all my friends. I had to go later because I had to work. And so I met them all there and they were just picking me up and we were going to go shopping on King Street after. So I just wore like a maxi dress. Didn't like that my shoulders were exposed on this plane. Like I, I was Ooh. just so weirded out. There was like a huge man next to me and his fat was exploding into the <laughs> seat next to me. And I was just traumatized. <laughs> I had to like douse myself in perfume. It was just really bad. So like, I don't. Yeah, no, I, I don't want to wear a dress on the plane again. I also take back what I said. I wear jeans a lot on the plane, mm-hmm. but it's a very different type of denim. Like I'm yeah. not saying like this isn't time for your like snatch de- denim. Like remember how I was hating on baggy jeans at the beginning of this episode. This is the time for your baggy jeans. Okay, pull them out <laughs> for okay, this. There's a time and place for everything. I'll always say that. Like, yeah. the the baggier, like, boyfriend pair of jeans, I actually think is an amazing thing to wear on the plane. Yeah. Because they're just as comfortable as your sweatpants, but you're just going to look like a hair. You're going to be elevated. More elevated? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think a sweater is, like, really comfy and mm-hmm. a good thing to wear on the plane. And, and, like, you can layer. So, like, wear a t-shirt under and then wear the sweater on top. And that way, if you got hot, you can take it off yeah i just bought this sweater from citizens of humanity this like charcoal gray sweater that i love v-neck kind of like oversized and i always wear like a white crew neck tee under you could do like a baggy pair of jeans and then i love to wear my taz platform uggs cute with like a crew sock Mm -hmm. or something cute and that's like to me cute casual like i would feel good enough going to lunch in that Mm -hmm. afterwards i mean like it's not like fabulous but it's not like i'm gonna be embarrassed to be yeah. like at the restaurant in this right. afterwards yeah yeah i think that's good yeah i wear uggs on the plane a lot because they're pain to pack they take up a ton of room if you have the platform kinda, like, ones clunky. yeah yeah mm-hmm. i always wear my heaviest shoes on the plane in your heaviest jacket and your hat yeah always i think that's all of our occasions to go over yeah don't you think i hope this was helpful i feel this is something I really needed. Like, I benefited from hearing you <laughs> talk about this. Okay, good. I'm glad. I feel like I'm glad we we talked about this as well. You know, let us know what y'all think of this episode. Yeah. If you have any occasions you want to know about, DM us. Yeah. As always, you guys can always book me for personal styling in the Index app, I-N-D-Y-X. 
and we can just delve into this even further if you need some more specific advice i would love to work with you with that being said i think that's all for now if you have any questions comments concerns you can always dm me and reeves on instagram i'm at it's amanda dewitt on instagram and tiktok and reeves is at reeves underscore lee on instagram and tiktok and if you enjoyed the spritz o'clock talk today please leave a comment down below like this video subscribe if you're watching on youtube Give us a five-star rating on Spotify. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts. We really, really appreciate all of you guys. And we read mm -hmm. every single DM and review that we get. And with that being said, I hope everyone has an amazing day. And we will see you all here next Tuesday for a new episode. Bye. Bye.